the third tribe of abandonment to the Quran is trying to understand the Quran. Ya akhi, have al Quran a message from Allah to you. Shouldn't you try to understand it? Tabillahi alayk, if I tell you, uh, I know Obama sent you a letter. Huh? Sent you a letter. President Obama sent you a letter. Iftah. Huh? What did he mean by this? وحيحلل ويطلع الفقه بتاعه ويقول القرآن برسالة من الله تيو وعاب رب العالمين على الذين لا يتدبرون القرآن أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا القرآن أصلا جاء كتاب هداية يا إخوة brothers and sisters in Islam مسألة إنك تن حسنات ومش عارفين this is an incentive to get you to understand the Quran كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وبعدين الآن the average Muslim does not know how to understand the Quran and I say this with respect to Allah You may see him a PhD in the dunya, in math, science, whatever it is, medicine, engineering. But if the Quran is not read, 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 شوف in each salah we say اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم who are those that is the straight path the path of those who earned your bounty your pleasure who are those هذه صورة الفاتحة it's explained to you at النساء ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم ولما سئل ابن مسعود ابن مسعود سئل ما معنى قالوا ربنا أمتنا اثنتين واحيتنا اثنتين فاعترفنا بمعنى هي يعني لو تفسرها آية البقرة The verse in سورة البقرة explains it كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم فالقرآن يفسر القرآن If you want to understand the Quran The first step is the Quran Yeah thank you for coming بارعوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن أحسن قول من من دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إن لي من المسلمين and who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and act righteous and says indeed I am of the Muslims هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن تباني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me in glory be to Allah, for I am not among the idolaters as the mushriks. Ya you all lazina amanu takullaha wa kunuma as sadikin. O you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest, that is those who are truthful. Now So uh, today's topic, we are here to see uh, the notion of the night salat and also the, the supplications, that is the dua, right? So we're checking the notion of night salat that people usually places emphasis on it. They place emphasis on the salats and they say there's tarawi, then they say there's tahajud, you understand? And that is, they say laylat al-qadr, that's what they say. Right, uh, salam brother Tawland Zilma, uh, Abdul Samad Adam, uh, Salis Jimmy Naganka. Yeah, I see you all. Thank you all for coming. Ah, uh, so you hear many a times the mainstream uh, Muslims, or I would say the mainstream sectarians, they will go ahead and tell you that, uh, They will go ahead and tell you that there is Tarawi Salat, there is uh, Lelat al-Qadr, 
and so on and so forth. And then they keep giving you rules and regulations uh, concerning the religion. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody said uh, you have not been online on WhatsApp since Sunday. Yeah, I've been busy. I've been busy. So, and you should imagine how many how many people are sending me, how much people send me messages. You understand, asking questions. So sometimes I need to have time uh, before I answer. You know, I'm busy with other assignments and my kids. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's it's not that easy you know dealing with uh, people all over the world you understand and answering questions day in day out so that's it uh faris mila salam you're welcome hey rock silva there's mazir salam uh, uh bizel bizel b that's all i can get i got an extra light but that's what I can manage for now. I think it has to do with my, my little girl's room. So her, her light is not that clear enough. Anyways. Mm. Good. So we are going to see the notion of the night salad and also the Tarawi, the, the Tahaju that they normally tell people to establish, right? Now, when we say Tarawi, the, the Tarawi they normally do is the, the evening prayers ordained by the scholars of the Hadith. I won't say it's ordained by God, neither is it ordained by the Prophet. It, it is ordained by the, the scholars of the Hadith, not from God, it's not from Allah. God never ordained such a Tarawih thing. It's not in the Quran. Nothing called Tarawih in the Quran. Uh -huh. They say the last 10 days of Ramadan are meant for doing night prayers called, they will say, Salat al Lilat al Qadr. They will say, Lilat al Qadr Salat. It means you are, you are looking for the night of destiny, that things can change in your life and you're expecting some miracle. No. No, God never said so. God didn't limit himself just for one night in a one special month to answer your supplications. That's arrant nonsense, right? Uh -huh. So they like you saying that there is a special night in the month of Ramadan in which God answers every supplication. That is arrant garbage and nonsense again, right? Uh -huh. that's, that's a nonsense. God didn't limit himself just for one day and one special night in a year for him to answer your supplications. <laughs> Which means every supplication you, de you do in honor any other day in the year is useless. God doesn't pay attention to that. So it's only that night of destiny, that small night of destiny, that's the one God will wait and answer your supplication. What kind of jumbles is th are this? Uh-huh. So some of the scholars will come out and tell you the the power of the night will happen on the 17th. Some of them will say 17th of Ramadan and some of them will say 27th of Ramadan based on their own messed up, you know, scenarios, right? Uh -huh. If there is anything relevant as such, God will have mentioned it in the Quran and he will tell you clearly and he will say, oh, on this day or on the 1st or on the 10th of this month. This is what you should look for. God will have told you that. Remember, God says, Quran chapter 17, verse 36. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't have knowledge about something, don't, don't practice it. Don't do it. You will be a fool to follow what you do not know. Remember. So Quran chapter 6, verse 115. God says, the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice, and there is no alteration to his words. And he is the Wahuwa Samir Alim. He is the hearing, the omniscient. So when it comes to dealing with the aspect of God, anything else, any scholar will tell you, there is something you have to look for. Anytime a scholar says something, there is one interesting thing you should look for, and I'm going to play a video. 
Listen to what Zakir Naik says. Any person, any Listen scholar, sister, what he says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, Kul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but if you're truthful. Any scholar, therefore, what I say that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. Any person, any scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, Kul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but if you're truthful. Any scholar, therefore, what I say that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. Now, exactly on point, you heard what Zakir Naik said. And the reason somebody might, might be assuming, saying that, why do you play Zakir Naik's video? Because he's a Sunni. I'm not playing because he's a Sunni and I support him. No. I'm supporting the truth he said. So any scholar says anything, ask for proof, right? You need a proof to substantiate that's, that issue so that you, you will not be a blind follower and you will not be a stupid follower, right? Yes, yeah, Salam Baba Sidi. So any scholar says anything, ask for proof. The proof is for you to go and, you know, ascertain as to this is true or false, right? So all these things I told you concerning the Tarawih that they keep telling you, they will tell you the Tarawih is the evening prayers ordained by the scholars, it, even though it's not ordained by God. And neither was it ordained by prophet. It was ordained by their own scholars of the Hadith, right? Uh -huh. If you ask them, this proofs, they don't have it, right? They don't have it. They only lie to you. They say, yes, uh, you know, you have to do five or ten, ten rakaat of tarawih. And then in the night you go and do Laylatul little qadr. Oh, my God. This is arrant nonsense and foolishness. Why will you do what you do not know? Huh? Why do you do what you do not know? After God telling you, Wala ilm. You understand? Uh -huh. So let's go and ask God concerning... Uh, did he mention anything about Salat? Or did he say anything about Salat al Qadr? Did he say it is on the 17th of Ramadan? Did he say it is on the 27th of Ramadan? Did he say we should get up at night and pray to him? Did he say that is a special night in once in a year that we have to look for something special? Let's go and ask. So when we go to chapter 97 of the Quran, uh, Chapter 97, verse 1 to verse uh, to the last verse. It says, Inna anzannahu fi Inna anzannahu fi qadr. Now, the who, the, the, the mere mentioned in that verse denotes the what? Masculine pronoun, which signifies the Quran. So he says, Inna anzannahu fi qadr. So let me see if I can put it on the screen. Chapter 97, verse 1 to verse 5. And I put it on the screen. And I sh let me share. Yeah. So Quran chapter 97, verse 1 to verse 5, it says, Inna fi Wa ma adiraka ma Nadira wame. Ricky. Nadira kuduba TV nazu, anna kare nazu, nazu, kinji. Aha. So, Inna anzadnaahu fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adiraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al-fishar tananzalu al-malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi'izni rabbi min kulli amr salamun hiya hatta mutlayl fajr right Quran chapter 97 verse 1 to verse 5 uh, we see what uh, the Quran is saying is saying uh, indeed we revealed it that is the masculine pronoun, the it, the domir, it denotes the Quran, the book, right? We revealed it in the night of destiny. That is Laylatul Qadr, right? Night of destiny. 
Then verse 2 says, and what will make you know what is the night of destiny? It's a question. What will make you know? Then verse 3 says, the night of destiny is better than a thousand months, which is over 83 years, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So the verse 4 says, the angels and the spirit descend therein by the permission of their Lord for every command or every matter. Then verse 5 says, it is peaceful or it was peaceful until the beginning of what? Fajr, that is dawn. So which means it is a special uh, instance which has happened in a night, in a night time. Now to understand better the situation of this scenario, uh, I will use chapter 44, verse 3 to verse 6 to explain further uh, on this issue, right? So I will take you to, uh, that is uh, Surah al Dukhan. Chapter 44, and I take it to verse 3 to verse 6. Then we see uh, what the verse says, and I can share the screen for you to see. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let me share the screen. Yeah, salam, nur, nur. Yeah, welcome, brother. Yeah. So chapter 44, verse 3 to verse 6, it says, Inna anza nahu fi laylatin mubaraka. So the same Laylatul Qadr is called Laylatul Mubarak. It's a blessed night. But God says, Inna anza nahu. This is not a present tense. It's a past tense. Inna anza na. We revealed it in the night, a blessed night, right? So it is not a present tense. It's a past tense of the Quran when it was revealed. Then he says, Inna kunna munzirin. Indeed, we are the what? The warners, or we are warning, right? Then God says, Fiha. Now, the Fiha is not talking about the Quran. If it is the Quran, God will say, Fihi. Fihi. But he says, Fiha, which denotes what? The night, the blessed night, the night of destiny, God is still talking about. So he says, Fiha. Yufraku uh, kullu amrin hakim. In that night was was distinguished. Uh, in that night, that particular night of destiny, God is talking about. Every matter or every command therein was distinguished wisely. That's why I mentioned the word hakim. It was distinguished wisely. And everything which happened in that night has to do with the book, the Quran, which was revealed. So the Quran is the Hakim itself. When he recites Surah to Yasin, Yasin, then he says, Wal Quran al Hakim. It's a wise book. So everything in that Quran, it's about a wise saying, right? So chapter 44, verse 3, it says, Indeed, we revealed it. In a blessed night, just as it says in chapter 97, verse 1, indeed, we revealed it in the night of destiny. So chapter 44 is a further elaboration of what transpired in chapter 97, verse 1 to verse 5, right? So chapter 94, verse 3, uh, chapter 44, verse 3, it says, then it says, indeed, we are warners or we are warning. Then verse 4 says, every command or every matter therein, in that particular night, was distinguished wisely. Verse 5, matters from us, we can say a matter or a command, or we can say commands, or we can say matters, based on the context, right? But it says, Amr. So, matters from us, indeed, we were transmitting, or we are the transmitters. Right? In Nakuna. Uh -huh. So, if you want to understand the context of chapter 97, verse 1 to verse 5, you have to attach it to chapter 44, verse 3 to verse what? Verse 6. You understand? Uh -huh. So then, the verse says, As mercy from your Lord. So, a matter from us, Indeed, we were transmitting or we are transmitting as mercy from your law. So the Quran is to serve as a rahmatan. Right? It's a rahmah that God has brought down to us. 
So it's a mercy from God. The Quran, the book, is to save us a mercy. So Quran chapter 17 verse 82 says, وَنُنَزِّلِ الْمِنَ لِقُرْآنُ مَا هُوَ شِفَاهٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا uh, Chapter 17 verse 82. So God reveals in the Quran what is a mercy. The Quran itself is a mercy for mankind, right? So then there God says, indeed, he is the hearer, the omniscient. He is the hearer, the omniscient. So chapter 44, verse 3 to verse 6, explains further what chapter 97, verse 1 to verse 5 is all about. But one interesting thing I want you to pay attention concerning chapter 44. Before I read verse 3 to verse 6, if you take your time to pay attention to verse 1 to verse 2, he started by saying, Hami. Then he says, Walikitab al Mubi. You understand? So it is the Al Kitab, which the third verse is saying, Inna Anzal Na Hu. The Hu is a masculine pronoun. In Arabic, we say Damir, uh, which is Muzakkar. That which is a, 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 a masculine pronoun. So this masculine pronoun denotes the book which was mentioned in verse 2. So don't be surprised when you go to chapter 97, verse 1, when he says, Inna anzal Without mentioning anything prior to that, you might think he's talking about somebody else or something else. He's talking about the book, the Quran, the book, right? So the Quran, God used a masculine pronoun for the Quran, and he used the masculine pronoun for the book. So it's the same thing, right? Because you find the Quran in the book, right? Mm -hmm. Just as it says in Quran chapter 27, verse 1, where Quran chapter 27, verse 1, he says, Then he says, So you find the same instance there. So the Quran, the Kitab, the same thing, right? You find it, you find the Quran in the Kitab, so same thing. So when God says, Inna anzal nahu fi laylatul mubarak, or he says, Inna anzal nahu fi laylatul qadr, he's talking about the same thing, the night of destiny or the blessed night. Good. So we can see the Quran, the book, is a book which contains mercy for the mankind, for the people. Ya yeah, salam, Sayyid Adam. The Quran as a book contains mercy for the people, right? And the Quran as a book contains Every wise de decision has been what distinguished wisely therein. It's wisely given out. Now, yes, so we move on. Now, you hear many a times the sectarians will tell you that God will only answer every supplication according to the night of destiny. But we will read throughout the Quran, it doesn't say anything like that. We don't see where, where God says, oh, this is the special night only in one year that you have to get up at night and call me in the last 10 days of Ramadan. So get up and invoke me. Within the last 10 days, there's one special night which I've made special between me and my servants. So call me on that night and I'll respond. That is aren't garbage and nonsense to say. It's not coming from God. So now, what happens if we call on God? What happens? So Quran chapter 2 verse 186. Let's see what God says. Did, did he say we should only call him in the night of Laylat al-Qadr? Is that what he said? Or are the liars, the mushriks, trying to lie to us without us trying to verify? So we should verify everything which we have been told. I played Zakir Naik video. He told you everything a scholar says ask for proof. You ask for, for a proof. Yeah, salam, uh, Sister Rosalind. You're welcome. Sister Natalia, you're welcome. Salam. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. So let me share the screen, then we see the verse. Uh, hey, salam, Anyas Mufti. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So I take you to Quran chapter 2, verse 186. Now God is saying, Wa isa sa'alaka ibadi anni. Huh? Then he says, for any curry.
God says, Wa iza sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qarib. Then he's, so he says, and when my servants ask you about me, then indeed I am near. That's what God says. He is near. He didn't say I'm only near in the night of destiny. The He never said, oh, I'm only near at this particular day. He says, I am near. So this is a generalized statement. Then God went further to say, Ujibu dawata da'i iza da'ani. He says, I respond or I answer the invocation of a supplicant when he invokes me. Do you see what God says? Now, this is these are the words of God, right? Good. So, Ujibu dawata da'i iza da'ani when he invokes me. Faliyastajibu li. So let them what? Respond to me. Let them answer to me. Respond to my call because God is inviting us to guidance, right? Uh -huh. This is what exactly he told the prophet to do. Quran chapter 33 verse 45 to verse 47. He says he should invite to the way of God, right? So you invite to God. So he's now telling God to tell the believers they should respond to him. Faliyastajibuli. Then he says what? Well, you mean be and in order to believe in, in me, that is in God. Then he says, La yarshudun, so that they can be well guided or they can be rightly guided. You see what God wants from you. He wants you to respond to him and believe in him so that now he can actually guide you. Because the purpose of the Quran is to guide you. The book is to serve as a guidance for those who are pious. And a pious person is the one who adheres to the commands or instructions from God. So all what God wants from you as a servant is to believe in him and respond to what he told you. That is enough for your supplication to be answered. Because remember in Quran chapter 2, verse 152, he says, askuruni askurukum. He says, and remember me and I will remember you. Waskuruni askurukum. Waskuruni, that is be thankful to me. takfuruni. And do not what blaspheme against me or do not disbelieve in me. So in order for God to answer your supplications. So people will be wondering, why is it that God doesn't answer my prayers? Why, why is it that when I supplicate to him, he doesn't? Because you have not responded to God. I give an example. It's just like me being with my kids. And I will instruct my daughter or my son to do something. I give an instruction that he should do something. And he doesn't respond to what I'm saying. But in other words, in the vice versa, he wants me to buy him a, a something, a toy or, a, a, you know, a chocolate. You understand? Even though I have also had him, I can ignore him. So people keep supplicating to God and they are like, oh, I've been praying to God. I've been saying this to God so many times he doesn't answer. Oh, really? You understand? Really? God only wants you to respond to him and believe in him and see whether he will not answer your supplication. He will. So if this same God can answer the supplication of Iblis, Quran chapter 7 verse 11, you read up to 18. He told God, respite me till the day they are resurrected. And God says, you are respited. But then because he is supplicating to God to go and do evil, God answered so that he can get hold of him on the day of judgment. Right? Uh -huh. So same goes with idol worshippers, mushriks, worshippers of Jesus, worshippers of, of a human being. They, there's a particular supplication they can do to God and God will allow that because this is what you wanted. It's evil. Because God says in Quran chapter 17, I think uh, chapter 17 verse uh, 11, he says, wa kana insana ajula." says the human being invokes for evil as he invokes for the good. And the human being is in haste or is in hurry. We understand? Uh -huh. So yours is just to be patient, respond to God and believe in him. That is enough for God to answer your call. So whenever you invoke God, he listened to you. He listened to you. The reason why some of your invocations are left unanswered 
you ask yourself a question have you responded to god if the answer is no don't wait till you see you are waiting for later later, 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 later. who is fooling you <laughs> open the quran and show us where god says later, later is on the 27th or on the 17th and that this is the special night i will wait for my servant to call on me before i answer their prayers who lied to you that way Remember, Quran chapter 17, verse 36 says, mm-hmm. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't have knowledge about something, even if it is me, Baba Shri, I'm telling you the truth, don't pursue it at once. Take your time. Investigate what I just said. I'm, I'm a human being. I could make a mistake. Right? So to eliminate the doubt, you yourself, the burden of proof should be on you because you have to now take the proof you have been given to investigate. Then you decide to follow it. Remember, if you are going down six feet, I'm going separately. If I'm going to be wake up on the day of judgment, I'm going separately. My records will only be in my hands, not in your hands. So you also have to use your faculty. Use it wisely. Because you don't want to end up like Quran chapter 33, verse 67. They ended up saying that, our Lord, we have obeyed our masters and our leaders, but they misled us from the way. Why? Because they are fools. Why? Because they, are, they lack reasoning. Why? Because they lack common sense. You understand? So that is why I placed the Kirnaik video earlier on for you so that you any can person, pay attention. Any scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse 111, Qul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but if you're truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say, that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. Only Zakir Naik, the most popular, the famous, which people want to listen to him and they love listening to him. He is telling you what he says or which any scholar says in Islam is zero. What God says, take it. So when a scholar says something, ask for proof. This is what he's telling you. You ask for proof because you don't want to be a blind follower. You don't want to follow things blindly. You understand? Uh huh. So let's move on. So we have, you know, Eliminated the doubt concerning people saying the night of destiny. Laylat al Qadr is a special night, one night in the year where you have to call on God before He answers your prayer. This is arrant nonsense and garbage. You'll be a fool to believe in that doctrine. I'm serious. You'll be a fool to believe God actually said that garbage. They are telling you. He never said so in His own book. You understand? Uh huh. So. We continue. So now let's go back to the notion of uh, what they say, Tarawi. Huh? They will mention Tarawi, and then they say you have to do 10, 10 salats, and some of them will go to Surah Al Fajr. Wal Fajr. Wal Yal Al Ashr. Wal Shafi Wal Watr. Wal Layli Iza Yasser. It has nothing to do with Salat Al uh, Tarawi. Neither has it anything to do with the 10 whatever nights and you have to do, uh, I mean, Laylat al-Qadr will come in 10 nights. You have to look for it. What, what kind of garbage nonsense is that? You look for what? Is that what God told you? That you have to gamble your faith and look for something special? Hey, hide and what? Allah <laughs> mushir You understand? So, Tarawi has nothing to do with Islam. It's not part of Islam. It's not part of the Quran. It's not coming from God. Neither is it coming from the Prophet. Right? It, they are not from God. Right? So if you want God to answer your supplication, you check Quran chapter 42 verse 26. He said, and he answers those who believe and do good deeds. He arguments them from his favor, but the disbelievers will have a severe punishment. You want God to answer your supplication, respond to him and, and, be, and believe in him. And then you do your good deeds. That is enough for God to answer your supplication. Try it and see if I'm lying. You'll be shocked to see how God answers your supplication. Right? Uh-huh. When you are supplicating to God, supplicate for what is good. Don't supplicate for evil duas. Don't go and, you know, do evil supplications. You are putting yourself in danger. Right? Uh-huh. So now let's talk about the notion of the night salat. 
are we only supposed to be doing night salat in the month of Ramadan or can we do it any other time? According to the Quran, when you go to Quran chapter 17 verse 79, there is night salat. It, it has nothing to do with the Ramadan. If you go to Quran chapter 50 verse 40, there is a night salat you can do. It has nothing to do with Ramadan. You go to Quran chapter 76 verse 25 to verse 26. In the verse 26, you see the night salat where you can glorify God and do your salat and prostrate to him. It has nothing to do with Ramadan. So you can do it frequently without it being in Ramadan before you call on God. Because there's nothing, so I'm not saying doing it in Ramadan is a bad thing. But I'm telling you, those legislations you have gotten from your mushrik scholars. Quran chapter 42 verse 21 says, Am lahum shuraka u shara'u lahu min ad Ma lam yazanu bi illa. Or do they have associates or idols or partners who have legislated for them of a religion to which God has not authorized? Because they give you legislations. They tell you to establish the tarawih. If you don't do the Ramadan, it's nullified. They tell you, go and do the al If you don't do, this is this. They tell you, go and do that. If you don't do, this is this. Ajay. Ajay. Okay. Yes. Kulleko fanana kyo. Uh -huh. So they will keep telling you all this nonsense just to put fear in you. And you are also upholding such legislations and God has not authorized. So before God will authorize, where would we have to see it? In the Quran. Because the Quran is al furqan It's a book of criterion. It is the book which distinguishes right from wrong. So the Quran is supposed to decide for you what else you need to follow. Remember, Quran chapter 2, verse 185. God says, Sharu Ramadan in Lazi Unzila Fihil Quran, Hudan Linnas. Then he says, Wali Bayinati Minal Huda Wali Furkan. This is the purpose of the Quran, is to serve as a guidance for mankind and to serve as a criterion. So, how come you are practicing something in your religion whereby God hasn't given a criteria of it in the Quran and you are, you are adding it to the deen of God? That becomes an act of shirk, because then you are a mushrik. So that is why God asked the question in Quran chapter 42, verse 21. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So the establishing of a night salat has already been there. The concept is there. It has nothing to do with Ramadan. It can be done anytime. If you do it in the Ramadan, it's a plus. I'm not saying it's bad, but take tarawi out of the concept of salat. God never give you tarawi. The one who gave you, if it's Sahih Buhari, go to him. He'll pay you for that. God is not going to pay you for this nonsense. Uh -huh. So when we say salat, the night salat that we establish during the Ramadan, they say tarawi or Lilat al-Qadr. As I said, these are not concepts from the Quran. These are concepts from the hadith, the doctrines, the mashabs that the scholars give you. It's not coming from God. However, when we go to Quran chapter 73 verse 1, you read, Ya ayyuhal muddas muzammil. Then he says, Kumi layli illa kalilan. Misfahu aunkuthu minhu. Then he says, Awzid alayhi waratila al-Qur'ana tartila. Now, the interesting part I want us to see in chapter 73, verse 1 to verse 7. This part is very interesting. So let me share the screen. Then we see what I'm where, where I'm heading to or what I want to say. Uh, chapter 73, verse 1 to verse 7. So I will share the screen and let's see what what it says yeah so he says yeah you are the muzammil kumi layli illa kalila then he says nisfahu Awin kusu minhu kalila. Then he says, Awzid alayhi waratil al Qur'ana tartila. Then 
Now he says, Inna sanuluki alayka kawlan thakila. Inna nashiyata layli hiya ashaddu watuwan wa aku wa mukila. Now this is very interesting. Very, very interesting. And I want you to see something here. In the grammatical aspect for people who, who understand Arabic or who know Arabic, I want to show you something. God says, Ya ayyuwal muzammil. Now it is talking to an entity. And the entity is the prophet who received the Quran, right? So he is the what? Covered fellow. He has been covered. He is hidden. So now God has to bring him out. Then God says, layli illa kalilan. Get up at night except a little. Right? You get up at night only a little or for a while. Then God says, nisfahu. Now this nisfa, this nisfa, it means half. But it is not talking about the night. It didn't say nisfaha. Look, in Arabic, when we say layl, layl is a feminine noun, which means night. Like you see women giving the name Layla, 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 right? We don't call a man Layla. <laughs> we call women Layla. It's a feminine, uh, you know, word. That is, um, uh, we say Mu'annath, right? Uh -huh. uh, is it, yeah, Mu'annath. We have Mu'annath and we have Muzakkar, right? So this is a, a feminine noun. So he says, get up at night except a little. Then he says, nisfahu. He didn't say nisfaha. So the, the nisfahu is not talking about the, the night. The nisfahu is denoting what you're about to do, the Quran, you have, the prophet is going to deal with. Then God says, awinkuthu, awinkusu, minhu, kalila. So the, the tertil of the Quran you are going to do at night or you exceed a bit over it. Like meaning dealing with the Quran, you can read half of it. You can read a little. You get up for a while. You can read half of it. And you can read uh, a little from it. You can decrease a little from it and read. How is it? Or you exceed a little over it. Over it. Then he says, وَرَتِّلَ الْقُرْآنَ tartila. So the Quran, when you read, uh, sit a little over it, then you read, you intonate the Quran by chanting, like a singing way in that in that night. This is what God tells, told him in the night, right? So when he gets up in the, that night, he can read half of it. He can do the tartil half of it, or he can decrease a bit from it, or he can exceed over it. That is the Quran. So that is why we have the masculine pronoun there. Nisfahu, then he go minhu, then it went alayhi. You can see masculine pronouns use. If it was referring to the night as the subject, then it will use ha. So let me tell you the point that people don't pay attention. So after saying awzid alayhi wa ratilil qur'ana tartila, then he says inna sanuluki alayka kawlan thakila. Indeed, we will what drop down, that is sanuluki, we will cast upon you a heavy word. Because the Quran, it takes intelligence and wisdom to comprehend what the Quran is saying. A fool cannot understand the Quran. An ignorant person cannot understand the Quran. Do you see? A transgressor doesn't benefit from the Quran. It causes him khasara. Quran chapter 17 verse 82. So the same Quran does not benefit any azalim except to cause more hasara for him. But it will rather benefit a believer. He will get the healing and he will get the mercy from it. You see the difference? Somebody will say, why, why should a book be, be like that? Why should a book of God do that? Go to the market. They sell knives. They sell knife, knife, a knife, right? This same knife for a good person is not harmful. The knife will not, the good person will not use the knife to go and kill somebody. But that same knife can be bought by an evil person to go and kill somebody. But it's still the knife. So that same knife can be used for good thing and can be used for bad thing. And same goes with the Quran. When an evil person takes the Quran, he has evil intentions to do whatever he wants with the Quran. When a good person takes the Quran, he has good intentions and it will benefit him.
So that is why God says in Nahu la Quran la Karim, fi kitabi makanun la ya masuhu illa mutahharu. Quran chapter 56, verse 77 to 78 or 79, right? Uh -huh. So what you need to understand here is when God says, Inna kaulan thakila, Indeed, we will cast upon you a heavy word. The Quran, the word of the Quran is heavy. That is why he says, Kitabun fusilat ayatuhu Quranan Arabian li kaumi yalamun. For people who know. وَكَذَلِكَ نُسَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِيَكُولُوا دَرَسْتَ وَلِنُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Quran chapter 6 verse 105. So that we may clarify it for people who know. You understand? So you need knowledge and you need intelligence to contemplate, to listen, discern, to, to know what God is talking about. Yeah, salam, nazir enesi. Uh -huh. So we continue... Chapter 73, verse 6, now says, Inna nashiyata layli. Now, after saying nashiyata layli, the layli, you see the layli. I, say, I said it's a feminine noun, right? And it has a definite article. So then God says, indeed, the nashiyata layli, that is getting up at night. Huh? The nashiyata is like a resurrection. You, like you, you get up the establishment to establish something, right? To get up at night, right? Of the night, God is now telling us uh, the rising of the night is more, more stressing. It's stressful. Here, I shall do what one wa mukila, and more appropriately stated. At that night, even though it is stressful to rise up at night for the night salat, right? But it is a time that you can appropriately focus and do your salat because you are not in a hurry to go to work. You are not doing anything. It's only bedtime and you get woke up in the night, you want to do salat. So there is no stress uh, in terms of focusing if you want to focus. Of course, getting up is stressful. But after you get up, you can focus and do your thing. But in the daytime, Fajr, Isha, sometimes you'll be doing your salat and you, you, are, you are in a hurry because... Events are still going on, right? So God says, in the nashiyata layli. So after the layli, then he used a feminine pronoun. The damir here is a what? A feminine pronoun. Then he says, here. You can see here, he didn't say hua. The hua is for a masculine pronoun. Here is for a feminine pronoun. So the here here denotes the layli. So you see the difference here. But at the upper side, when I say nisfahu, it is not, the nisfahu is not about the night. It is about the Quran. When you are dealing with the Quran, you read up to half of it if you can, or you decrease a little from it if you cannot read up to half. You read, you decrease a little, or you exceed over it. Any amount you want to read in the night. And you have to intonate it because it makes it like a singing way. So it takes the sleeping away from our eyes when you are actually uh, enchanting the Quran, Right? And then you are chanting the Quran to get a message from it. So God says, Inna saluluki alayka kawla thakila. When you say kawla, it is a, a word or a speech, right? Or a statement. Thakila means something which is heavy. Thakala, to be heavy, to put weight on something, right? So then God says, Inna laka, you Muhammad, Inna laka fi nahar. That is fi nahar, huh? nahar. Saba Antawila, indeed for you uh, in the daytime, in the daytime, you can see it was in the night God said you should get up for that night program. You have been uh, instructed, which the prophet was instructed to get up. But then God is telling you, in the nahar, in the daytime, then he says, Saba Antawila. It is an occupation at length. Tawila, that is Tawla, something which is long at length. And of course, after Fajr, after Fajr, according to the Quran, there is no Salat in the day, in the middle of the day. After Fajr, no Salat in the middle of the day. Then it goes till Isha, the evening side, before you do the next Salat. There is no sat, nothing as Zuhur or Asr in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Somebody will say, what about Salat al-Wusta? Salat al-Wusta doesn't come in the middle of the day. Remember, we have middle of the day and we have middle of the night. Salat al-Wusta is the one being given to the Prophet. In the Quran that we am reading to you right now, 
So that's why God told him, Inna laka fi nahar saba antawila. He doesn't have any salat to do in the middle of the day. I hope you understand. So instead, God gave him the night salat. And I'll further explain to you what he was supposed to do in the night salat, right? Good. So now I've read chapter 73, verse 1 to verse 7. So what I want you to understand, if you go to chapter 52, verse 48, it says, And be patient for the judgment of your Lord. For indeed you are before our eyes, so glorify with praise of your Lord when you get up. Verse 49 says, End of the night. Thus glorify him as the stars retreat. So during the night. Now the interesting part I'm coming to is in chapter 73 verse 20. In order to show you the night salat that God uh, gave to the prophets and the believers, right? So chapter 73 verse 20. And I'm going to give you the verse, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So Surah al uh, sorry, Muzammil, Surah al Muzammil. Then I take you to verse 20. So let me share the screen and we see what the verse says, right? Yeah, Salam, uh, Aboladi Amod. You're welcome. Salam. Aha. Uh -huh. So I share the screen that we see what. Uh, it says. So the verse is in Rabbaka. Now this Rabbaka is talking to a second person pronoun, meaning the prophet. It means you, you the prophet, right? In Rabbaka ya'lamu annaka takumu adina min thuluthai layli wa nithfahu wa thuluthahu wa ta'ifatu min allazina maak. Then he says, Wallahu yukaddiru layla wa nahar. Then he says, Alima anlam tu suhu fataba laikum fakara u mata yasara min al Quran. Alima ansa yakunu minkum marda wa aharuna yadribuna fil ard yabuta guna min fadilila. Wa aharuna yukati luna fi sabili lahi fakara u mata yasara minhu. Then he says, Wa akimu salata wa atu zakata. وَأَكْرِدُ اللَّهَ كَرْدًا حَسَنًا وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ خَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمَ أَجْرًا وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So now, let's see what the verse says. The verse says, Indeed, your Lord knows that you get up less than two-thirds of the night. For half of it, this half of it is denoting for the Quran. Remember, I started from chapter 73, verse 1 to verse 7 to show you the same instance, right? Uh -huh. So half of it and then one third of it and so do a faction of those with you. So they get up at night for the Quran to either do go through half of it or one third of the Quran, right? And so do a faction of those with him. So the believers are also supposed to do the same thing. It's not only limited to the prophet. As the sectarians or mushriks will tell you, oh, the night salat is only for the prophet. No. God has estimated the night and the day. He knows that you may never calculate it. Now this calculating it is denoting when you are reading the Quran, when you are doing the tertil, he knows that you may never calculate the, the reading, like to calculate, oh, I've done half, I've done one quarter, I've done two third. So then he says what? Therefore, and so he has forgiven, he has pardoned you. Fataba alaykum. He has pardoned you for forgiving you. Therefore, read what is easy of the Quran. Because he knows that when you are reading the Quran, you cannot pay attention to maybe, oh, I've done half of it. Oh, I've read one third of it. Uh, so now God says he has pardoned you. So read what is easy. So now you and I can take the Quran and even read one page at night. We read just one page and do our salat. So just like somebody earlier on asked the question, Brother Nur Nur. Nur Nur asked, he said, Baba, which surah to recite during the prayer? I have a video on that which shows you how, which type of surahs you can recite when you are communicating to God. But when you are doing the salat in the night in order to benefit from the message, there are a lot of surahs you can actually select and read. You understand? Just to understand what the Quran says, right? It doesn't mean you are reading the Quran back to God. No. 
So God says, he knows that some of you will be sick and others will be traveling in the land, seeking for the favor of God, while others will be fighting in the way of God. So read what is easy from it and establish the salat and give the zakat. So you have to read what is easy from the Quran. No limitation now. There's no limitation saying, oh, you have to only read half of, half of it when you get up in the night. Or you have to read one third or two third or one quarter. No. Read what is easy for you. God has forgiven on that. Then he says, and lend God a good loan. So it's either from your salat, it's either from your reading of the Quran, or it's either from your charity, you are lending God a good loan. Right? Then he says, and whatever you send forth for your souls of good, anything good you send forth for your soul, you will find it with God on the day of judgment. It's with God which is better and greater in reward and seek the forgiveness of God because we all make mistakes and we all sin. So seek the forgiveness of God. Indeed, God is forgiving and merciful. Now this is Quran chapter 73 verse 20. The reason why you are getting up at night to read to, uh, is for the, mainly for the Quran. So that is the night salat because remember the Quran, the salat we establish is best possibly for the Quran. That's why we establish salat. If not, if we take the Quran out, then whatever you are left with is called supplication, dua. Then dua is what you'll be doing to God. Calling on God, oh God, have mercy. I need money. I need kids. Oh God, give me a car. Let me buy a private jet. Oh God, why did you make me sick? Give me health. Then our salat will only be limited to that. So it is the Quran which brings the connection of the salat we do because you read the messages of God and you are given a message to abide by. You understand? Okay. So let's continue. Now, one thing I want us to pay attention is uh, the night salat when we are, we, are, we are getting up at night to call on God. And like I said, it's not limited only to Ramadan. But of course, if you do it in a Ramadan, the month of it is a plus, right? So let me talk about this part, then I open the phone lines. Then people can ask questions when they want. When you go to Quran chapter 39, verse 9, God is asking a question. He says, is he one who is obedient during the night, prostrating and standing, being cautious of the hereafter, and hoping for the mercy of his Lord? Say, are those who know equal to those who do not know? Only those of intelligence will take heed. So if you are intelligent, you should know that getting up at night, that God has given you the night salat to do. That is what I call the salat al wusta, right? It is in the middle of the night, right? Uh -huh. So God is saying, is he one who is obedient during the night, prostrating and standing, being cautious of the hereafter and hoping for the mercy of his Lord? Say, are those who know equal to those who do not know? So if I know the benefits of getting up in the night to call on God, to invoke God, hope for God's mercy, and I get it. Will I be the same as the one who doesn't get up at night to call on God? Who doesn't get up at night to read the Quran? Will I be the same with him? The answer is no. So those of intelligence will take heed. Now, when we go to Quran chapter 3, verse 113, God is now telling us emphatically by the comparison. He says they are not equal. Among the people of the book, just as he made the comparison in chapter 39, verse 9, that are those who know equal to those who do not know? The answer is, they are not equal. So he gave the answer in chapter 3, verse 113. They are not equal. Among the people of the book, it's a group of people, that is Ummah, a nation, who stand reciting the verses of God during the night and they what? Prostrate. Because after reciting the verses, you fall down to show your submission by prostrating. You understand? And it's, the people of the book have been doing it. And among them, they are not even equal. Same goes with the people of the Quran. We are not equal. If I am doing it in the night, you are not doing it. We can never be equal. My achievements can never be the same as yours. So this is why God told the prophets in Quran chapter 17, verse 79. He says, uh, Perhaps your Lord will raise you to a commendable position. Makam and ma'amudan. 
So if you want your Lord to raise you to a commendable position, the best solution for that is to get up at night and call on God and for the favors you need and do what he has asked you to do. Because remember, Quran chapter 2, verse 186, he says, so let them respond to me and believe in me. Then he will answer your supplication. It's as simple as it is. Now, Quran chapter 51, verse 15 to verse 18, it says, indeed, the pious will be in the gardens with springs, taking what their Lord gives them. That is on the day of judgment. Indeed, they were benevolent before that. Before they went for the judgment day, they were benevolent. Verse 17, rarely did they sleep at night. Rarely. They do sleep at night. That is, that, that is one of the reasons why I told you this night salat is not mandatory throughout. So rarely did they sleep at night and they sought forgiveness before dawn. But it's a plus, it's a bonus that when you get up, Someone who gets up at night to call on God with somebody who doesn't get up at night, they are never going to be equal. Do you see the difference? Good. Uh -huh. So they sought forgiveness before dawn. Right? So before I end this segment, if you go to Quran chapter 17 verse 9, it says, It says, indeed, this Quran guides to that which is more appropriate. So if you want any guidance, that you want guidance between you and God, the Quran is what you have to look up to. After God placing an emphasis by saying, indeed, this Quran guides to that which is more appropriate. Then he says, وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّا لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا And gives good news to the believers who do good deeds that they will have a great reward or a magnificent reward. So the Quran is what guides you to what is appropriate, more appropriate. And then it gives you good news that you will have a great reward for being a believer and doing good deeds. Right? So all the good news you need from God can be found in the book of God. What else does the human being need? So to top it all, I will just recite the last verse and then we bring this to an end. As I said earlier, Quran chapter 17, verse 82, God says, Then he says, Wala yazidu illa khasara. And we reveal from the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy. For the what? Believers, not for everybody. The healing and the mercy can only be attained for the believers. The believers, only the believers can attain this. Yes. Only the believers can attain this healing God is talking about. Then God says, Wala yazid zalimina illa khasara. And it does not augment the transgressors except in khasara, in loss. Right? Uh -huh. So even though the Quran is in the house of the Quran, the Quran can guide you to that which is more appropriate. Remember, for a transgressor, it is rather leads him to, to hell because he's in loss. So these are the things we have to also pay attention. So as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing called Tarawi in the Quran. Put it aside. It's not coming from God. Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. If you don't know something, don't practice it. Put it aside. It's a burden on you. It has nothing to do with God. If you want to do your own night prayer where you can call on God, read the Quran, do beneficial things between you and God, fine. That is up to you. But there's nothing like do it five times, do it ten times, get up one special night out of the ten night, last ten nights of Ramadan, you need to look for one special night. God is going to answer your prayer. That's a foolishness. No wonder people don't follow the creed of Abraham. So God says in Quran chapter 2 verse 130, Who will desire other than the creed of Abraham, if no one who fools himself? So automatically, if you believe in what the Shias, the Sunnis, the Tijaniyas, the Ahmadiyya, the Salafiyya, the Wabiyya are telling you to do, you are a fool. Because that is not the creed of Abraham. The creed of Abraham can be found in the Quran. That is why Prophet Muhammad himself, Quran chapter 6, verse 161, he says, Kul, Inna ni hadani rabbi ila siratin mustaqib. 
dinan kiyama millata ibrahima hanifa wa ma kana min almushrikin he says indeed my lord has guided me to a straight path huh? an upright religion that is the creed of abraham and he was not of the what idolaters that is what prophet muhammad said and then out of your foolishness you said you are following the sunnah of nabi and this is your prophet following the creed of abraham which can be found in the quran Quran chapter 3 verse 95 he himself told you sadaq allah uh, that god has spoken the truth fatabi millata ibrahim hanifa follow the creed of abraham the exodus that is it so why go and follow something else to fool yourselves when you can investigate and verify if you are being lied to or not so this is why when i do my lectures i give people the evidences the proofs they can go and study for themselves so it didn't be like you are my servant or being under me to serve me no follow god and serve god that's all so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to put up my phone number and then uh, you can call me via whatsapp and you ask your necessary questions two questions at a time when you ask your first question you wait i answer you you ask your next question then we move to the next uh, segment right and please please for the benefit of the program today you ask questions relating to the topic of today don't go don't take me back to some other uh topics you understand it will deviate everything from the topic so base your questions on the topic of today or discussion of today so that people can benefit the phone number is below the page there you can call via whatsapp inshallah I think last time somebody asked me a question I think the last week lecture I did somebody asked a question regarding uh like when somebody breaks a fast intentionally he's fasting and he breaks it intentionally that person cannot be considered a believer but they are asking me what is the punishment for that God only say ransom if you cannot do if you struggle you will suffer you and your ransom and when we say ransom we don't know what ransom is right something you do in exchange for a punishment or for a penalty you do in exchange to compensate for that that is ransom so what is the burden why are you burdening yourself if you cannot do the fasting just ransom if i'm a believer and i'm doing it that's up to me because i want to attain uh, the the achievements i want to get from god remember quran chapter 39 verse 61 you can only be saved on the day of judgment by your achievements quran chapter 39 verse 61 you can only be saved by your achievement on the day of judgment good salam shah says i said i'm brother ku uh, brother alam yes alam please explain what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant about the qadr being better than a thousand uh night i uh, it says it's better than thousand months that is about 83 years right 83 years right mean It has been explained in chapter 44 to verse 6. That instance have been explained in chapter 44 verse 3 to verse 6. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Because every wise matter has been distinguished in the Quran for that particular lives. Right? Having a book of guidance from God. You living on earth for 83 years without the guidance of God. Tell me which one is beneficial? I hope you are understanding this logic. He revealed the guidance in a particular night for people to be guided. So compare that night with the thousand months you living on earth without the guidance of God. Which one is better? I hope you get my point. The answer can be found in the Quran chapter 44 verse 3 to verse 6. Every matter therein has been distinguished wisely. 
So when you take such a wise book, it's better than living on earth for over 83 years without the guidance of God. So that is the instance there. That's why God says it's better than 1,000 months, right? Uh -huh. So uh, your next question is, I have, I have time. So your question is, or you can call, the phone number is there. You can call via SAP and answer the questions. Yeah, if you cannot call the number below, you can also type your questions, right? Uh huh. And remember, I'm on my abstinence. I'm on the fasting, so I don't have chance to drink water or anything. So I don't want to be exhausted. I need to maintain my energy. So I'm also checking the time as well, and let's see what happens. Yeah, salam. Hi, alaikum salam, Shahid. Yes. Brother, I have a, a question about fasting and children. Yeah. I have children. One is 12, 13, 15, 16, and they want to fast. But the younger ones, sometimes they have problems. They say, it's, it's happy, we have to go to school. And then I have something like, then I, I tell them, okay, you just try, and if you cannot, keep it till the end of the day you can break it because i don't see any harm in this but what does the Quran says about this because okay they're not really children but they're not grown up either they're in between yeah okay so have, do they have to pass like they could and can they pass uh, break their fast easily or should i put more because i don't like to push them no no you don't you don't there's no compulsion in, in the dean in such a way that you don't like you have to give people chance themselves to 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 utilize their faith you don't need to compose yeah. people you can advise people if they if you are trying to let them become uh you know uh how will i say independent people yeah. and then responsible people you have to advise them the right thing to do but don't force them because Quran chapter 2, verse 184, it says those who are sick, they should do a number of other days. Those who are traveling, they should do a number of other days. But then it says, As for those who will endure, who will struggle, who will suffer it, meaning they can do it, but they will suffer. Then God says, They have to feed a poor person. You understand? But here, yes, I, I understand, but the problem is, they don't have any money from the self. From you the you self. are you are the mom. Yes. So so then I have to do it. It's my responsibility. Yeah, yeah, you can do it for them. It's normal. Like you buy parents do buy certain things for kids based on like a, it's like the moment you do it on somebody's favor, like a, it's a charity. So you tell the kid, okay, I'm buying this, I'm giving charity on behalf of you. It's like you are teaching them so that when they become independent, yes. they can also do it themselves, even feed the poor. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Thank you. Yes, there's nothing wrong. And I tell you what, when it's time for 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 the for the animal sacrifice, sometimes I do send money to my father back home, and he's but he he doesn't have to do it himself. But I send him money, and he buys it yeah. and do it. it. It's it's almost the same. You understand? So you are yeah. helping somebody who is not capable of affording or doing something. There's nothing wrong with that. So as a parent, it's a way of teaching your kids. And But don't force them to complete the fast. If they are struggling, let them run some. Yeah. Then you tell them, okay, since you are struggling, I will feed the poor for you. That's it. That's beautiful. Thank mm. you so much, my brother Shahed. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you too. Awesome. Right, yes. Uh -huh. So that's the, the, the logic and reasoning behind what God tells us in the Quran. And the evidence I just gave can be found in Quran chapter 2, verse 184, Surah Al-Baqarah, right? Uh, so let your next questions follow. I think maybe I can take two more calls. 
or uh, two questions more before I end. So let the questions flow. And I would like to say God bless you and thank you for those who, uh, you know, help fed the, the people back in Ghana. We are able to feed about, I think, 80 people. Yes, 80 people at least, 80 people with enough food for the month of Ramadan. And God bless you for this uh, generosity. And uh, for people who I try to also help in between, uh, uh, as you know, I will try my best to help, but I cannot help everybody. Just like, you know, sometimes it's not easy. The messages I get from people, the you understand, I try my best to help. I, I can't help everybody. So sometimes I need to divide my time. I have family. I have my own family back home. So I try my best, you know. So may God help us to help, help other people as well. This is all what I hope for. God help us to help other people, inshallah. So just like God helped me with knowledge, and I'm helping other people. You understand? So somebody will say, oh, if there's God, why don't he feed everybody? If he feed everybody, who, who work for everybody? Nobody will go outside and work for somebody. You understand? The life is a balanced thing. God gives you wealth so that you can help others. God doesn't give you wealth just because he wants you to show off. No, you help other people so that they couldn't become envious or jealous of you or to cause them to steal or become criminals. You understand? So this is why we help other people as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm waiting for that. Uh, thank you. I was saying, I'm waiting for one or two questions before I drop the topic. I don't want to be exhausted. I don't have the chance to drink water. <laughs> and as I advise you, Sorry. When the month is getting to, this month is getting to the end, after one week, after one week, if you are a believer, start looking for the, the crescent. Like, look, you can look up to see if you can see the crescent, the waning crescent. When you spot it, then you can end the fast. The, you can end the fast in the next day. You understand? The evidence is based in Quran chapter 2, verse 189. Yes. Uh, it is a, you use the present to as a timing device so you know the beginning of ramadan and you know the ending of the ramadan when you spot the crescent so during after one week from now right anytime you see the crescent in the sky it's mark the end of your siam right so keep that in mind uh -huh. make your life easy remember quran chapter 22 verse 78 god says min haraj. he is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion, right? So if you belong to the religion of God, God didn't put any difficulty on you in Islam. Bear that in mind. Uh, Eddie Debichet, the number is below the screen. Look, it is passing down there on the screen. That is the number you need to call via WhatsApp. That is the number. Yeah, Sister Natalie, you can call, you can yeah you can ask the question you can type it if you want to call you can call mustafa muhammad yes inshallah inshallah yes salam Salam, uh, Brother Shem. I'm sorry, I don't want to take all the time to ask questions, but the line is uh, open, right? Yeah, yeah, it's open. You you even had two questions to ask. You only asked one question and you left, so. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I want to ask it in, in life because um, it's about the, 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 the Shah Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. I have a lot of discussions with mm. all, also with Quran alone people who say that they look at the meaning of the month and 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 it's really crazy to listen but i just wanted to to talk about this in in this live reading so other people can know it too and and don't get the distracted of the of the things they say they say you don't have to fast some people say you don't have to fast it's it's something between you and god you don't have to fast you you just have to fast one day in the ramadan if it's hot or the hottest point they, they say a lot of different things. They but, are, they uh, are, they are, really they are ignorant. Uh, you know, one thing I advise people: don't go taking advice of people who 
who you don't seem or deem as knowledgeable enough. People who just sit behind a, their keyboards and write gab gibberish, don't take them seriously. And this is why I always say such people, tell them Baba Shraib is available. They should come, let's have a dialogue. Yes. I'm available. I do it. I'll bring I them. It. I always say this. Yes, and they, they will. Because they, they, yeah. They yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can speak, speak. No, because they are arguing about the Arabic language. And, you know, I don't know the Arabic language very well. And then I always um, put uh, verses that you gave. Yeah. That you, in your in your Quran, that you translated perfectly, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then they say, no, it's not correct. And then I say, hello, you can come live and you can go on a dialogue in peace with Brother Shohat. They exactly. Say what you're not agreeing. Exactly. But then they say, you are a blind follower of, of this <laughs> show head. But I'm not. I really, I, I check every verse you say, and it's right. It's just right. Okay, okay. Sister, Sister Natalie, let me answer this question. Quran chapter 2, yes. verse 185. God says, yes. Faman shahida min kumushar. Then God says, Fali yasum. This yasumu, he used the masculine pronoun at the end to denote the month. So whoever witnesses the month, let him fast it. He didn't say let him fast one day. Let him fast half of it. He says let him fast yeah. it. So if I say fast this month, are you going to fast one week? No. You are going no. to fast till from Nazwa. You are going to fast till you see the new moon, till you see the end of, of the moon. That is the month. Exactly. You understand? So they lack they lack what we call understanding the Arabic Arabic grammar. And this is why some people might think, oh, I'm boasting, I'm being proud. No. I'm only calling you for a dialogue because I want you to embarrass yourselves in the public. Because when you are, yes. when they are in the keyboard, and keyboard, when you are hiding, you can say whatever you want. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody can see you. So you can write your opinions. Sure. Remember, the social media is full of opinions. You understand? Uh -huh. So this is what why they do that. And I know most of even the Quran and Lofa, I know most of them, they hate me. Because they can't, they yeah. can't stand me. It's it's not normal. I know yeah, yeah, it's not normal. I know. When you're doing the right thing, when people okay. hate you, it means you are doing the right thing. You understand? Alhamdulillah. That, Alhamdulillah. that is it. So to make it easier, when they are speaking ill about me, I'm not saying everybody should agree with me. Look, something can be the truth, but you might not agree with it. So yeah. if they think I'm here misleading the people, I only call for one challenge. Let them step out. We can have a dialogue respectfully, right, without insulting each other. And I'll bet you, I'll make them expose themselves. I'll make them look stupid. Easily. I know it. I know it. Easily. I know it. Easily, indeed. But they don't have the courage to do that. No, they, they don't. Blah, blah, blah. Talking big mouth. But if it comes to the point to come online, then they're, they're not wrong. You know? That they're just at, 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 at the keyboard. And that's it. Exactly. Know? That's the keyboard. So they are keyboard warriors. Let them remain being keyboard warriors. <laughs> no problem. Let them be keyboard warriors. <laughs> But I keep saying, if they say I'm misleading people, that's why I come and do life lectures to help people with the knowledge that God has given me. So if somebody yeah, hides somewhere and Baba is misleading people, I only ask you for a simple favor. Come out and embarrass me in front of the people so that they know I'm lying. It's easy. It's easy. Yes, it's, it's it easy. It should be easy if you're lying. Yes, it's easy challenge. But I don't know why they are scared. Yeah. I don't have horns. You see, they're, they're scared to expose themselves. Exactly. So that is the point. And I, I promise whoever of them face me in a live dialogue, I'll make sure I use their video. I'll save it and I, everybody will see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Sure. <laughs> so thank you, sister. And we keep in touch. Thank inshallah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, peace, brother Shahid Said Usman. You're welcome. Uh, I can <laughs> say that of Canada, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nur Nur says, Baba, how to celebrate end of Ramadan? There is no such thing as celebrating. Ramadan itself is a celebrating. If you are celebrating Ramadan, the, the act of abstinence you do in the Ramadan is an act of celebration, right? But after Ramadan, what are you going to celebrate? Are you going to celebrate that a, a blessed month is gone, a holy month is gone, a sacred month is gone? Are you going to celebrate it? Hey, no. You celebrate when a wicked person dies. You celebrate when hardship is gone. You celebrate when you are in failure and you become successful. You celebrate Madonna's end. Where is the logic in this? 
blessed month which helps you to get closer to God. Why will you celebrate when it has ended? No, you don't do that. Yeah, salam alaikum. Your name and where you're calling. Well, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Your name and where well, you're calling. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Hello. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, well, how are you doing? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm good. You? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. How are you doing? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm good. You? Oh, yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. You know, yeah. Uh, intro introduction, introduction first, please. Your name oh, and where you're calling. I'm Eddie. Yeah, I'm Eddie from Ghana. Aha, uh -huh, nice to meet you. Okay. So you yeah, have two questions. Nice to meet you too. Oh, okay. My, my, you know, my question is, we have a lot of people here in Ghana where they started the fasting, uh, I think on Thursday. Is this good or just bad? Because I'm still confused. Uh, it depends. It depends. Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says, do not pursue yeah. what you do not know. Okay. That okay. is Quran chapter 17 verse 36. So if you find people doing certain things, you need to ask them for questions okay. to, to in order to get a proof why they do that. Uh, everybody okay. does things for a reason. Look, if, 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 you, okay. if you see somebody doing something and he tells you, you ask yeah. him and he says, I don't know, then that's a foolish person. It is only okay, foolish okay. people who do things and they cannot explain themselves. Now, but when a person oh, okay. has a reason, it doesn't mean because he has a reason, that means it's the truth. You have to, you understand, cross-check, verify oh, yeah. what they say. Okay. So if they tell you, oh, today is the first of Ramadan, then you ask them, how did you know it's the first of Ramadan? So now they have to tell you, oh, we spotted the moon. So how come you guys can see the moon and I'm not blind and I cannot see it? What is the difference? Or they say they have a lot of hadith saying that you can start it, you can start the first thing without, I mean, citing the person. So that you know that that ends the argument. Hadith is their source, other source they follow. So that's that's oh. that's out of mushrik, because we are following the book of God to detect the religion for us. We are not following man-made books to detect the religion. So that ends the argument there. Oh, okay, you understand. So uh -huh. my next question. No, my next question is, does the Prophet Muhammad know anything about the Hadis? No. Okay. Yeah, he, he acted, as a matter of fact, he never gave anybody authority to write a book called Hadith or to write. He ne Look, Imam Bukhari, who came over 200 yeah. years after the Prophet, never met the Prophet. And he doesn't have authority from the Prophet to write such books. Imam Bukhari is not an Arabian. He comes from a city called Bukhara. And now the country is called Uzbekistan. That's where he comes from. So look at the distance yeah. between Uzbekistan and, so, and, uh, and, and the Arabian Peninsula. Look at the distance. Take a map. Check the mm -hmm. distance. This is where Bukhari mm -hmm. comes from. Who gave him that permission to write the books they have today? Apart from him, they have Sahih Muslim. They have Sunan and Ibn Nisa. Mm -hmm. They have uh, Jamia al mm Tirmidhi. -hmm. All these don't have authority from God and the Prophet. So they are books the enemies of Islam wrote to put lies and confusion. And that's why we have different sects and division all over. So they, they brought the Hadith for, for, I mean, for a Muslim to, to, to pray five times daily. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. You can find oh. it in the Sahih al-Bukhari 349. It is a fabrication. Let me tell you how the fabrication sounds. According to the okay, Hadith okay. narrated by Abu Dar, he is saying that mm -hmm. the Prophet narrated by saying, the angel came and took him to the heavens, to the highest heavens, right? And then when he yeah. went, Jibril took him to God. And when he went to God, God gave him 50 prayers. And when he's coming back with Jibril on the way, they met, they met a dead, the ghost of Moses, because Prophet Musa was dead. So they met Moses. And then Moses said, go back to your Lord. Your people cannot do it. So the question here is, are they telling us that God didn't have that capacity of understanding that his people cannot do the prayer? Wow, it's not easy. Good. So yeah. now Moses told him, go back. So now, imagine Jibril, the boss of angels, standing next to Muhammad, and you, the dead Moses, telling Muhammad to go back. <laughs> <laughs> and where was Jibril that time? He's sleeping. So now Muhammad said, okay, Jibril, let, oh yeah, let's go. So they went back, and they negotiated with God. It's just like a bargain, like I went to the second hat shop to buy something. You bargain, and then God said, okay, now I've reduced it again. 
go. So as he's going, Moses said, hey, have you there reduced? He said, yeah, okay, go back. It's not enough. Go back again. Tell God to reduce. So they did that till it became five prayers. Then finally, when he came to Moses, Moses said, go back again. Then Muhammad said, now I'm shy. Because God told him oh. my words will not change again. After changing from 50 to 5, he the Hadith is telling us God says his words never change again. Why, oh. Where is the logic in this? There's no logic in that, man. Simple. And man, as I'm know. telling you right yeah. now, this video is on a record. Any scholar listening to me, or if you know any scholar, send them this message and tell them, Baba Shribe, I said they should come for a live dialogue. They are liars. Oh, you know, or... I mean, a lot. I've been watching a lot of scholars you know, or in social media. They are always disproving, disproving you, saying, "Man, anytime <laughs> there there will be a lot of people trying to disprove Islam and so on or so on." Man, I've been watching them a lot, man. Yeah, but all of them. They lack common sense. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do? Yeah, all of them. What they do yeah. is is try to tarnish yeah. a person's image. They cannot. They yeah. cannot address a topic with evidence. What they do is yeah, they say, you know, forget you know, bro, you know, brother, you know, brother, what's about Islam? Where, if you don't know something, where when you try to ask somebody, or if I don't know, if I don't know anything, if I try to ask somebody a question, they say, Oh man, why are you asking this kind of question? But I don't know, you know, the last year, the last time I asked somebody about how do you, why did why are we going to hatch and surrounding this kind of cover? If you tell me, I don't know, he say, Oh no, what the guy, what the fuck is. Telling me this, why is it on Prophet Muhammad? And also, I said, No, I don't know. Can you explain? Because I don't know anything. They, you see, they want you to be a blind follower and keep quiet. It's just like, a, no, we, we, are, we, are, we are living in a world of technology, bro. Exactly. So you cannot, yeah, exactly. We are living in a curious world. You you cannot blind somebody. Of course. When you ask somebody a question here, he can Google it and see. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. Yeah. So uh -huh. I don't know why. When you ask somebody, you know, we have Ali Sunna, we have Shia, Amir, Shia. We have Shia and all lot of people. Yeah. Everybody got his own faith. Yeah. Everybody got everybody got his own belief. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the five times prayers. I was, you know, I was confused that day. I was watching a video telling me the five times prayers and doesn't come from I mean the Quran and so on and so on. Where yeah, I'm yeah. a little bit confused, bro. Yes. So how does a Muslim have to pray? Well, the, the the prayer, like I, I keep saying, I have a video on it. And uh, usually all, all these issues are on my YouTube channel where people benefit from it. Okay. But the point is, okay. the yeah. most essential part of Islam is not prayer. But the sectarians will tell you it's prayer. Yeah, they say if you didn't, you didn't pray, you don't, you, when you fast, you didn't pray, it's like, like you didn't do it, like it's waste. Okay, good. I'm coming to that. The sectarians okay. will tell you the prayer is the most essential part of Islam. That's a lie. Now, mm -hmm. if I don't know God, if I don't know yeah. who God is, I don't understand who yeah. God is, I don't know how to serve God, why would I pray? Mm -hmm. Then what am I praying for? Mm -hmm. Because God says in Quran chapter 107, He says, For mm -hmm. saun." Yeah. So if you are praying and you are heedless of your prayer, what is the benefit of the prayer? Oh, man. Yeah. It's useless. So it's you useless. need to know the essential part of the prayer is knowing the one I'm praying to. If I don't know the one I'm praying to, why would I pray? Mm -hmm. So you first need to go know God. So Quran chapter 98 verse 5 says, <laughs> Yes, that's the most important thing, number one. If you fail this first one, your salat and zakat is useless. So does the prophet pray five times daily? He never did. Okay. Hey, man, look all these kind of people you lie about. <laughs> lie to, to the prophet like that, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They lie about the prophet. Brother, I give you, I give you one simple example before we end. You see, okay. this modern day and age, we watch footballers, right? Yeah. yeah. Now imagine a footballer being alive and a journalist twisting his words. And he's still alive. Oh. He didn't say something, mm -hmm. but the journalist will say he said this, he said that. Now he will see him to call. Good. Now imagine the prophet is dead today. He's not there. Who will sue them? Man. It's not easy, bro. That is the point. It's not easy. So we've been fooled, especially it's affecting blacks the most. 
You understand? It affects blacks the most because we have been programmed not to ask questions and we have been inferior all these years in everything. You know, Muslims Muslims have always me like you are Kafri, man. You know, you when you're Christian, you go to hell and all so on and stuff, so on and so on, man. So when you sit down and just think about it and just confuse, you don't know even what know what, what to do or what to say again. Yeah, no. so the simple part the simple part is if you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you from the way of God. So that is what you need to pay yeah. attention to. But my problem, my problem, the, the Al Sunnah people are the most problems here in Ghana, bro. Majority, I yes, I, that that yeah, that majority. that I agree. Yes, majority, they yeah, are the main problem. Even recently, recently, what is trending is my drinking of Rubutu and stuff, man. Some say <laughs> it's good, some say it's not good, man. Some were selfish interests, you know, it's all little shit, bro. I don't understand, but you know. <laughs> Since well, we don't, yeah, since we don't, since we don't have that knowledge, we just follow them, but we follow them blindly. <laughs> Yes, but the yeah. problem is that is why that is why a person like me is available. I make sure people don't follow scholars blindly. And not not to talk of me myself. I don't want anybody to follow me blindly. Uh what I want to with the tool I'm giving people is for people to become learned people themselves instead of relying yeah. on what because I give an example. Let's say you are in a classroom and the teacher is teaching mm -hmm. and you the student don't study. When a teacher makes mm -hmm. mistake, who will correct him? No. I understood, man. Good. So that is the point. I understood. You, you understood, see, so man. that's yeah. what I represent. And that is what I'm yeah. trying to Good. elevate my people to wake up and cross-check things. When you when you read about Islam, bro, man, Islam is the most beautiful religion, well, you know. It is. It's a religion of peace, yeah, a religion of peace and so on. It's, yes. You know, but when you try to listen to the other sectarian, man, they always, man, they find it very difficult, bro. It's very complicated. It is. You know what I'm saying it, so. It yeah, is. I made the religion very complicated. It is you know, because when you, die, um, when you die, when you die, I mean the grave and also and so on, so on, man, you never die. So how can you <laughs> murder somebody? Know what is going on in the grave, bro? Uh, it's it, not easy. You know, uh, when it comes to when it comes to aspect of faith, uh, people will play mm. with your faith, and that's why Africa is duped, duped especially because we we people use faith. To, to manipulate us. They use faith to lie to us. They use man, faith. Man, bro, man, bro, on judgment day, we have a we have a question to ask. And <laughs> we have a low, whole lot of problems because this this I mean these hardies and also so on and so on. And you know, it's not easy, man. It's not, it's easy. not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, brother, yeah, brother bro. Eddie. I yeah, think there's another bless. may God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate so when, that. Are you, when are you going to do another program? Oh, my next program, because of my family time, so usually it's on Tuesday. So my pro next program is on Tuesday, inshallah. May God bless Tuesday. you. May God bless you, bro. May thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Talk to you another time. Inshallah. Right. Bye -bye. Yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh -huh. so this is an interesting conversation. I just decided to, to, to just have that conversation with him due to like uh, me bringing the topic to an end. And as you see, uh, for the brother, I think uh, Sister Natalia, the one with the Greek name, put the link to the Salat. Like, you know, uh -huh, that, that's a link for that. You know how to get in touch with your maker. And for people who are saying it's not a ritual, it is a ritual. And I said, anybody who said I'm lying, I'm available for a dialogue. You can have a dialogue. It's simple as it is. It, it is. Uh, God bless you to Noor Noor. Yes. God bless you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is where I have to bring the topic to an end. Uh, I'm getting exhausted. And I guess we have to reschedule again next week, inshallah. Uh, what, 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 what else do I need to say? I think a question, I don't know. Let me see if I... Okay, let, let me, I will leave that for, for next week, inshallah. So ladies and gentlemen, if there is no more question, I think this is where I have to bring the topic to an end. 
And as you all see, I spoke about the Tarawi and the night salat, the Nelet al Qadr, and then how they lie to you and say there's a special night in the month of Ramadan where this, the angels and God will come down and say, invoke them. No, no, no such thing, please. No such thing, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate the support. This is where I bring the topic to an end. And yeah, uh, salam. Jazakallah, uh, Salis. Now go to correct. Yeah, thank you very much, brother Eddie. Uh, uh, all of you, thank you for the support and the patronage. I appreciate it. And let's stick to the truth. Let's stick to the guidance of God and follow what God says. And let's use our common sense and reasoning. It's beneficial for this course, inshallah. So all I can say is Subhana Rabbi Izzati Amma Yisifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The first tribe of abandonment to the Qur'an is trying to understand the Qur'an. Ya akhi, had al-Qur'an a message from Allah to you. Shouldn't you try to understand it? Tabillahi alayk, if I tell you, uh, I know Obama sent you a letter. Huh. Sent you a letter. President Obama sent you a letter. Iftah. Huh. What did he mean by this? Oh, the Quran. The Quran. The Allah to you. وعاب رب العالمين على الذين لا يتدبرون القرآن أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا والقرآن أصلا جاء كتاب هداية يا إخوة brothers and sisters in Islam مسألة أنك تن حسنات ومش عارفين this is an incentive to get you to understand the Quran كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته أهو. وبعدين الآن the average Muslim does not know how to understand the Quran and I say this with respect to Allah you may see him a PhD in the dunya in math, science, whatever it is medicine, engineering بس يفتح القرآن كده ويقرأ يقرأ تفهمت كده ولا يفهم he doesn't. He doesn't. When the Quran has a hidaya in Ibn Rabbuk, when we, they carry us to the graveyard, bury us, leave us alone, the Quran is to be explained by the Quran first. That's step number one. Shuf, in each salah we say, Ihdina surat al mustaqeen, surat al ladina an anta alayhim. Who are those? Guide us to the straight path, the path of those who earned your bounty, your pleasure. Who are those? Have you saw the Fatiha? It's explained to you at Nisa. وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَمَّا سُئِلْ ابْنَ مَسْعُودِ ابْنَ مَسْعُودِ سُئِلْ ما معنى قالوا ربنا أمتنا اثنتين وحيتنا اثنتين فاعترفنا بمعناها يعني لو تفسرها آية البقرة the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah explains it. كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم. فالقرآن يفسر القرآن. If you want to understand the Quran, the first step is the Quran.